Hey everybody, I wanted to talk with you about Governor Cuomo and his resignation that happened today. I'm actually in my car outside of his office. We've been here since this morning and a lot of people were surprised by his announcement that he's resigning from office and that he will leave office in 14 days. Now, a lot of people thought the governor was gonna have to resign eventually, but a lot of people were surprised by it. But a lot has happened since that report came out by Attorney General Tish James that found that he allegedly sexually harassed 11 women. You have the filing of criminal charges against him over the weekend, and the big thing looming, looming over his head was set to uh, jump off on Friday, which was the beginning of these impeachment proceedings in the state legislature, where he was given a deadline of Friday to turn over materials that he thought would defend him, you know, would, would defend him against possible impeachment. So rather than go through the impeachment proceeding and all of that, which would take months, the governor said he wanted to save the taxpayers of New York State millions of dollars by not allowing state government to basically become paralyzed with this political proceeding. Now, whether you believe it or not, that's your choice. He did address the climate of today in 2021, which I think is something we should take a note of. He talked about how you people are often found guilty in the media, especially in social media, without any type of proof, you know, proof required from the person making the complaint. Now, this is something that I've talked about before and that we've talked about a lot on Street Soldiers when we've done the shows on the various legal cases that are going on. In today's day and age, people can make an allegation against a famous person and without being required to have any proof. They can go on Twitter, they can go on Instagram, they can go on whatever, Facebook, make a complaint, say that this person did this to me. And if they're, they did not file a civil lawsuit or file a criminal complaint with a police department or local law enforcement, there's no requirement for them to have any proof for that. So if you're a famous person, particularly in these cases involving males and females, if it's a famous man, there can be allegations made by women for whatever reason. I'm not saying that's the case in, with, <clears throat> excuse me, with Governor Cuomo. What I'm talking about what we have seen with him is this rush to judgment, which we've seen in other cases, especially when it's involved entertainers, sometimes with rappers, sometimes with sports figures. Uh, with famous personalities. So the big issue is we have to distinguish in our minds. The Attorney General's report was a preliminary report, but everybody took it as if a jury had come back and handed down a verdict of guilty on all these counts of sexual harassment of these current and former uh, female employees and associates. So we have to be really careful as we listen to these stories. I try to be very careful when I report them. I still believe in America. Well, you are innocent until proven guilty. That's why when I do my stories, I always remind everybody the person, if the person does in fact say they're innocent, they say they're innocent. You know, I say the person maintains their innocence. Um, which in some cases has turned out to be the truth. In other cases, it's just what they're saying. But it's up to a jury to decide who's guilty and who's not guilty. It's not up to the police. It's not up to the social media posse. It's not up to haters. It's not up to uh, people who are jealous of that particular person for their achievements or their position or their power or because they didn't give them the relationship or the money or the, the connection or the come up that they had wanted. There are all sorts of reasons for this, and it can go both ways, but a lot of times it is happening in these situations that are involving women. Women victims have the right to speak up, and I salute all women victims who speak up against sexual harassment, who speak up against sexual abuse, who speak up against the gender discrimination that is still very much a big part of our society. As for, but it is getting better, and it's gotten a lot, lot better, I can say, you know, over the last 15, 15 years or so. But the important point about Governor Cuomo that I think a lot of people are um, kind of overlooking is his daughters. He's the father of three daughters, some of whom were around the same age as these, some of the accusers. And he said he had a very compelling part of his speech where he said, I look in their eyes and I see the shame, I see the pain. I don't, he just couldn't deal with that, I think, as a father. But I think the real thing was practical. He realized that the tide there was basically nobody in his corner. The mayor wanted him out. His former political supporters wanted him out. His right-hand person in Albany govern government, Melissa DeRosa, she resigned on over the weekend on Sunday night. 
So there was a lot, there was just nobody in his corner saying, hey, wait a minute, let's, let's let the justice system decide what's going on here. Let's have a, an impeachment hearing. Let's decide whatever. And he was really in a place, really between a rock and a hard place because impeachment would never clear him. It would just drag up more things. And there's other issues around his uh, tenure as governor, like the nursing home, uh, nursing home situation with the COVID patient, patients where uh, they weren't given the proper protocols and treatment according to many people. So there's a lot of other things that are going on behind the scenes, but I think the big thing with the governor is he said, I never did anything. He said pretty clearly and categorically that he believed he never did anything to harm any woman. He said, I always believed I stayed within the line. And then he said, but I didn't realize that the line has changed that what was acceptable in the past is not acceptable now. Now, whether you believe that or not, that's up, that's up to you. He's ex an extremely intelligent man. He's an extremely savvy politician. And, uh, you know, that's up to you to decide. But the point is, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. A lot of times now, it's not just about what's accepta acceptable culturally, what's acceptable regionally, what's ac acceptable in terms of people's uh, backgrounds, what's acceptable in terms of, you know, just generations, generationally also. But the fact of the matter is, I think pretty much every guy knows you don't touch a woman in, in any kind of inappropriate way. That's pretty basic. Little boys are taught that. And that's a pretty basic thing. So how far he crossed the line, whether he knew there was a line or not, uh, that remains to be seen. And one of the big things that the governor's attorney, she spoke at length about the attorney general's report before he announced his resignation. And she said there was a lot of evidence about these incidents that was not included in that report. There was no corroborating evidence. There was no contradictory evidence that there was a lot missing. Basically, it's like when you're hearing one person's story, they can go, oh, so-and-so was horrible. They did this, they did that. Then you go to the other person, you go, wait a minute, I didn't do that. That's not what happened. This is how I see it. And it was a different thing. Basically, you know, there's there's their story, there's the other person's story, and then there's there's the truth. But in this case, it's gonna have an impact on New York. We'll see what actually ends up happening. Uh, there's been reaction even from the White House saying that he, that the governor did the right thing by resigning. Mayor de Blasio obviously was relieved. The governor Cuomo is, is now out of the picture. But even, but some of his toughest critics, um, his political enemies are saying, listen, this is not over. He can still face criminal charges, uh, which the, the charge that he was charged for over the weekend was a misdemeanor. Um, he can face legal issues. He can face uh, investigation, other different types of probes or whatever into some of his policies and some of the things that he's probably done as governor. But the fact of the matter is he came before the camera. He said, that's it, I'm out in two weeks. And here's a man that guided us through the pandemic. He helped New York get the supplies that we needed. Remember when you couldn't get any PPE? We all have PPE now, you know, in our, in our on our desks, in our homes, in our cars, in our vehicles, in our bags, everywhere. Remember there was a time when we couldn't get it and we all really needed it. He fought for that. He he fought to steer this the state and the city through a very, very tough period when the pandemic, when we were losing losing hundreds and hundreds of people every single day to the coronavirus. So we have to keep all of this in the balance and uh, see what comes, you know, comes forward in, in the days ahead. You know, it, the, some of the women, the accusers have, have spoken out. They've been very brave about speaking up. All women should speak their truth. And if something wrong though, I believe, if something wrong has been done to you, if, if a man has committed a crime against you, you need to report it. It needs to get reported immediately to your supervisor. If it's in a workplace following the, you know, the sexual harassment protocols that all companies and businesses in New York State are required to follow. And then if it's, if it's something else and if it's more serious, it needs to get reported immediately to the police. And then the justice system can take its course. There can be due process for the person who's accused instead of just going on Twitter or, or going to a magazine and trashing somebody without any proof or offering any evidence that what you're claiming happened actually happened. I believe women, I think women need to continue to speak up. I hope that there's a day very, very soon 
where the type of abuse that women are still going through and intimidation physically and emotionally and mentally in the workplace, in our private lives, in public, in social settings, then that becomes a thing of the past and that it becomes something that is completely and totally unacceptable. But for now, we'll see what happens with the governor. Um, he has done a lot of major achieve. He has made a lot of major achievements, the Moynihan train station, the rebuilding of LaGuardia Airport, a lot of other uh, public works projects, the Second Avenue subway. He said, we're going to get it done, uh, different things like that. So let's look at everything. Let's look at the picture and hopefully more of what is actually the truth will come out in the days to follow. Okay. That's your Lisa Evers report. I got to go out and do another hit.